What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie with JRP Performance here. Right off the bat, I want to apologize for the crappy microphone quality. I know you guys are going to comment about that. I promise we're going to get a new camera, but <laughs> this is uh, this is a super spontaneous video. It was super random or else, you know, I would have had Jeffrey help me, but uh, I was actually assembling our good friend Robert Johnson's VR38 block and this is the well, this is not this is the new block, but this is from the car that threw the rod and you know destroyed everything. The one that I made a video about. Um, but anyway, I was assembling the engine, as you can see. I've put the first three sets of pistons and con rods in there, and they're already you know stretched and everything's good to go. Uh, and I all of a sudden remembered that I haven't really talked about rod bolt stretch stretch as much as I would have liked to in the previous videos. Uh, another thing is, I want to apologize for the mess over here. It's usually never like this. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm getting irritated just looking at it, but we've just been pumping out a lot of engines lately. So it's, it's kind of messy in here. We're going to clean up tomorrow or on Monday, we're going to clean up and, you know, get it back to our JRP spec. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about rod bolt stretch and you know why it's so important and why we actually bother stretching them i mean after all if you have a high quality torque wrench you could technically you know just torque your rods to the spec that they give you and be good with it right well caveat to that just like anything else um first and foremost i want to say that me as an engine builder uh me as the owner or co-owner of JRP, me and Jeffrey, we both take a lot of pride in what we do. I, as the engine builder, take a lot of pride in every single engine that leaves JRP. So I have to make sure I do everything possible on my end to make sure that whenever this customer takes delivery of their brand new engine, it's going to be in service for a very, very long time and it's going to be problem free. And that's actually not that hard to do because I have every single tool that I need to make sure I can do just that. I have rod bolt stretch gauges to measure the stretch, which is obviously what we're gonna be talking about. Um, I have torque plates for, you know, every single motor that we work on, you know, the VR38 stuff we don't have yet. We're actually gonna order this week, but we have torque plates for 4B11, 4G63s. Um, you know, we have the most expensive, you know, dial bore gauges and micrometers you can buy. I mean, we don't, skimp out on anything we don't cut corners when it comes to the engine stuff and most of you guys already know me you guys already know how meticulous i get with the engine building stuff um and it's just it's one of those things that's you know it's a passion but at the same time my name's behind it my shop's name's behind it and we want to make sure we do every single thing possible to make sure that that engine is gonna perform the way it's supposed to perform and it's gonna last as long as it can possibly last um that being said, let's go back to the rod bolt stretch topic. So, yes, there are a lot of people that will just uh, torque the rod bolts and be done with it. And I'm not saying you're gonna have a failure. But what I am gonna say is that every torque wrench is going to be different uh, as far as accuracy goes. You can have two snap-on torque wrenches and they will both be slightly different in accuracy. Um, you know, let alone if you're talking about like a Harbor Freight torque wrench, if somebody's trying to build an engine. If you're trying to build an engine with a Harbor Freight torque wrench, I mean, you might as well just stop right now because your career is not going to go too far. Um, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I just straight up think that you need to invest in good tools. I always say you cry once, you know, you spend the money. It's just like build. It's just like the customer's end. You trying to build an engine. You know, if you go through us, you're going to spend a good amount of money, but you're gonna get what you pay for. You know, you're gonna get something that's not smoking, that's not gonna throw a rod as soon as you do a pull. But anyway, all that put aside, um, the variances in the torque wrench, you know, calibration and quality, that's one thing. The second thing is, even if your torque wrench was perfectly accurate, what if you had a problem with the fastener? What do you mean by that, Ronnie? Well. What if there was something going on with the threads of the fastener that you couldn't see? Or what if there was something wrong with the rod end, you know, the, threaded end oops, the threaded end of the connecting rod? Um, so when you put your bolt in, you know, even if you had enough lubricant, which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, you know, you torque it to spec, you have a great torque wrench, you go to the highest value, 
I haven't had times that I've done that and I've been about a thou or even two thou under the stretch limit that I had to basically fall within. Um, so real quickly, a connecting rod bolt or any fastener for that fact provides the clamping force by being stretched. Every fastener works this way. So when you stretch a fastener, now granted you don't go beyond its yield point because once you get to the yield point, the yield point is where the fastener basically loses its ability to go back into its original shape. So as long as you stay below that, if you're at a proper stretch that's below the yield point, that fastener is always going to basically try to pull itself back to its original position. And that's happening, you know, live pretty much, you know, as you're operating the engine. That's always trying to happen. The rod bolt's always trying to go back to its original position. Hence why it has stretch on it. So if you go beyond that, if you, you know, go to a crazy torque and you know, oh, okay, I'm just trying to make sure this thing's gonna hold together. Well, if you go beyond that yield point, then that fastener is not gonna wanna go back to its original position. What does that mean? That means it's not gonna provide the clamping force that it needs to, and you're probably gonna throw a rod because you're gonna lose a bolt. So in short, whenever I'm assembling a motor, I use these rod bolts, stretch gauges. Now I have a car bolt in here that's made by CP Crillo. That's their proprietary bolt. They make the WMC bolts and then they make the car bolts. Uh, real quickly in comparison, this is like the custom made 625 that ARP offers. And then the WMC stuff is sort of like the 2000 grade that they offer. Now, uh, not taking sides. I love using, you know, I've used hundreds and hundreds of sets of rod bolts from ARP, great bolts. But um, as far as the CP stuff goes, because they have their own proprietary bolts, they usually stretch on the first try, at least to the lower end of the, you know, stretch spec. So they're very high quality. The threads are just, you know, insanely high quality. You don't got to run a tap through them. I mean, I have a dedicated tap over here for the, you know, like the manly, connecting rods that we're trying to use a 625 bolt on usually the 2000 grade stuff is okay but the 625s usually you'll find that you have to go to about 10 to 15 foot pounds more of torque just to get to the proper stretch and that's another controversial uh, subject because some people will say you know torque is what's uh, i'm sorry stretch is what's actually important it's not the torque that's true, I kind of agree with that, but uh, if you have to go to crazy torque numbers, there's probably something going on with either the fastener, the lubricant, there's probably too much friction, or there's something going on with the actual uh, threads on the, bolt, uh, on the rods. So this is why I have this $100 tap. Yes, this tap was $100, very expensive, you know, very uh, high quality tap. I and mean, I don't know if you guys can see, but this thing is pretty much flawless. Uh, Again, apologize for the mess, by the way. Usually a lot cleaner than this, but we've had a lot of engines lately uh, to build, so I'm going to clean this up. Uh, but anyway, so usually for the manly stuff, I would have to, if I'm, again, if I'm using the 625 stuff, I would have to, you know, put some uh, oil on that tap and run it through the rod and make sure it's actually uh, accepting the bolt that I'm trying to put in there. Another thing is the actual bolt flange. So the bottom portion of the bolt, sometimes the manly rods will have a problem with that basically lining up being perfectly centered. So, you know, you would have to go to higher numbers to get, you know, get to your stretch. Now, that being said, I have never had a rod bolt failure. So I have had to, I've, I've had to go to, you know, higher than uh, provided torque specs to get to the proper stretch. Again, that's why I say it's a controversial topic because um, essentially the most important thing is the actual stretch that you provide the, the fastener with. Now, uh, um, again, as mentioned before, the stretch is what holds the fastener um, or provides the clamping force on the fastener. So if you're past that stretch or if you're under that stretch, you're not gonna be having the clamping force that you basically need. Um, and this is sort of an application basis thing as well because on this GTR engine, for example, you know, the car bolts, 
they give you a stack of five to seven thousands of stretch which is quite a you know wide range uh, on the manly stuff you have like five to six tenths of a thousands of range but they give you two thousands of range as far as these bolts go uh now the gtr stuff i like to keep it right in the middle i like to keep it at six six point two thousands of stretch on these uh, the uh, i'm sorry car bolts um but to be 100 percent honest with you if it was a car that was going to be making factory horsepower i would just make sure it's properly stretched i wouldn't be concerned if it's six thou or five thou as long as it's you know within spec but since uh robert's going to be making in excess of a thousand we just ordered him twin gtx 3076s so he's going to be making quite a bit of power um you know, we want to make sure when he revs the engine up high, you know, we did get him some uh, Tomei 274 uh, cams, some stronger, stiffer valve springs to be able to obviously handle more boost and higher RPM without valve flow. Um, and I'm doing my job as an engine builder, taking all the precautions that I need to, to make sure that the rod bolts are going to be providing the right clamping force. Um, so real quickly, I'm just going to demonstrate this. I uh, wish Jeffrey was here. But uh, he had to he had to go somewhere today, so uh, you know I have to I, I'll show you guys like this. It's not a big deal. Uh, I can still get the point across. So usually what you'll do, or not usually, well always if you're trying to stretch a rod bolt. So basically this will be in the engine. Uh, I can't really show that right now, but this would be in the engine on the rod. So you would put this. Um, this is the rod bolt stretch gauge. You would basically put this on the fastener and then it won't be zero. You would have to zero it out. So you would do this whenever the rod cap is seated. So you basically, you know, snug both fasteners and then you back them off just a little bit to go to its free length. Uh, real quickly, that's another thing you kind of want to take a note of. So every single fastener for every single rod you want to take a measurement of. Um, so in the case of, you know, after 20, 30,000 miles, the customer comes back and wants to do a refresh. You can basically go back to your blueprint sheet, which I have over here. Every single engine obviously gets that. Um, and you can reference it and see if the bolts actually stretch during operation. If it has, you toss it and you get a new bolt. Again, guys, remember these bolts can cost a little bit of money when you're trying to get, you know, a set of six might cost you about four or 500 bucks. But when you think of the chaos that can happen, if you don't have um you know proper clamping force on a connecting rod bolt i mean you can see why it's well worth paying the money for good bolts um anyway so you would zero it out when the fastener is loose basically and then you would go to the you would want to start at the lowest torque value that the manufacturer of the bolt gives you so just say 45 pounds let's just say you'll go to 45 and then you'll put this gauge on there and now the bolt will, will actually have stretched so, you know, in the case of these uh, car bolts, it's, you know, it just says don't exceed 50, 58 foot pounds and you want to be within five to seven thousandths of stretch. So that would be five and this would be seven thousandths. So, like I said, I like to keep it around six on these higher horsepower builds. If, if it's going to be revving to the moon, like if it's a... 2.1 EVO or something that's going to be revving past 9,500, I would want to go to the maximum stretch that they, you know, allow basically. Again, as long as you don't exceed that, because there's still a little bit of wiggle room before you reach the yield point. They do that because what if you accidentally, you know, just torque it a crazy amount and, you know, you don't want to just ruin the fastener on the first try. So I, you would want to go to the highest possible stretch if you're really going to be revving the engine super high. But that's another thing i want to talk about real quick it's not how much power you're making it's how high you're revving the motor um that's also where the importance of the rod bolt itself comes into play you need a higher tensile strength rated rod bolt if you're going to be revving the engine to the moon uh the, the gtr stuff usually doesn't see anything past seven or seventy five hundred rpm usually for the most part um so these bolts are just you know fabulous for what we're trying to do um also the lubricant so cp carillo obviously has their own proprietary lube now the manly stuff comes with their own stuff it's not the same as the arp molly lube that we use on the arp head studs and main studs they're all different but if i get 
a set of manly con rods i toss the manly stuff and i use the cp stuff if i'm going to be using a high pressure lube like this or in most cases i use the cmd extreme pressure lube which um one of my good friends, uh, Aaron from Arlington Machine, actually gave me this to try out. And uh, it's worked great on the ARP stuff, especially the 2000 grades. Uh, they stretch very properly on the first try usually, you know, as long as the fastener is clean and you apply the right amount, they're good to go. But as far as the CP stuff goes, I always use the CP stuff on their own bolts. Um, and sometimes you'll find that you will actually reach the desired stretch if you actually take the fastener out, clean it, and put more lube on it, more fresh lube on it. Sometimes all you got to do is you got to polish, you know, uh, these um, uh, threads on the rod end by actually putting fresh fluid, you know, fresh lube, um, torquing it, checking the stretch, bagging it off, cleaning it, and, you know, repeating the process for you. Same thing with the manly stuff, the 625 stuff. Sometimes I have to do it like 10 times on a single rod to get it to stretch. Again, guys, these are just precautions that I, as an engine builder, have to take and make sure that whenever that engine leaves this room, it's going to do what it's supposed to do, and I don't have to think about it when I go home at night and, you know, worry about, oh, what if it actually does lose a bolt? in operation or I, I take all the guesswork out I have enough stress we have enough stress at the shop you know with projects and stuff like that I don't want to be stressed about something that I can easily avoid with the tools that I already have so there you go guys I seriously hope I've answered all the questions about rod bolts and stretch and why we stretch them if you have questions please by all means drop it in the comments um, and you know we'll answer them over there we had a lot of cool stuff coming up we have very big news that you guys are gonna hear from me and jeffrey very very soon um and yeah thank you guys for the support seriously i mean jrp wouldn't have been possible with, without our you know customer and client support and we're really thankful for what we have and it's because of you guys so thank you very much we'll see you guys next time